Okay. Yeah. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Bill, Bill Tischler. Uh, I am your uh, alder here for District 11, and uh, I've graciously invited to, to come and speak with you today. Um, I am a uh, kind of born and raised here in Madison, just grew up uh, just down the street over on, on Regent Street, right across from Hoyt Park. Um, then my family uh, moved to the Westmoreland neighborhood 2003. I think it was, and uh, after 2004, I think we moved in, uh, and it was actually a, a very welcoming neighborhood. I ended up finding out my, right across the street, I had uh, people I went to high school with, I hadn't seen in a couple of years, and then uh, right across the street from me, uh, 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 Jan uh, and, and Joe were living, yeah, both, and so those are the first, uh, and it, it kind of confused us a little bit when uh, my kids, because it's like, Wait, we we at least we saw Joe, and then we'd uh, uh, and then uh, we'd see two Joes, and they were like, "What's uh, what's going on?" So, uh, um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's it's and it's it's somebody you know I, I you know I, I miss uh, uh, quite a bit, a very special special person. But uh, yeah, so thank you for uh, for inviting me here today. Um, I'm going to keep this kind of informal. Uh, I mean, I have uh, some questions that were sent. To me, but I also want to make this an opportunity for all of you to ask me questions. Um, uh, but let me just uh, kind of—I guess one of the questions uh, that I'm—I uh, guess the first question here I was uh, is, what is my, uh, I guess, professional background? And um, you know, I've had the, the good fortune of, of really living and working within a pretty much a three-mile radius of everything: where I went to school, where I work. Uh, I uh, went to uh, Hoyt School, I went to, to Van Heys, I went to West High School, and then I went to the UW. And uh, uh, and then uh, both went there as an undergrad. The uh, university hired me my senior year, uh, kind of end of senior year, to start creating uh, uh, television lecture courses. So I was broadcasting courses this is back in 1991. So I'm kind of dating myself here. Um, and that kind of led to what has become a career of creating uh, distance education courses and, and programs. Um, I started putting some of the material that I was putting on broadcast television, because this, this is broadcasting statewide for free uh, for people to watch. Uh, courses like in American history, did ones in social work, uh, physics, uh, did one on Danish literature. Um, and then I started, we didn't, you know, we didn't, we only had one, one channel to broadcast. So, uh, so I started putting stuff uh, online, and this is back 1993, 94, which is pretty early on. And after a while, we started finding that more students, uh, as the years went on, more students were accessing the, the course from the online classes uh, than they were watching TV. So, uh, so that's really created a, 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 a career for me. And now I've uh, still been at the university now for off and on for 30 years. Uh, and uh, we're offering uh, now thousands of, of, of uh, uh, opportunities for students to take not just courses, but also to take uh, to take uh, earn full full degrees, master's degrees. And now I'm beginning to work with uh, uh, Department of Corrections and the Odyssey program. And we're we're beginning to offer courses uh, to in, to people who are are uh, uh, in, you know, incarcerated behind bars. And that's that's really kind of how I see a way the university and myself is doing kind of social justice to help help individuals to earn a degree. So when they do leave, they're seen first as 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 a college graduate, as a person, and then uh, individual with with a a, a uh, prison record. Um, so that's kind of how I got to here. So I'm very comfortable with cameras, although I I would prefer to be be in the back there uh, behind the cameras than up front. But I've stepped out of my shell uh, a little bit, um, and that's kind of why I stepped into serving as an alder. Is I have uh, you know I have a lot of a lot of friends who were, are politicians. Uh, I, I helped them uh, running behind behind the scenes, and eventually they started saying, you know, you really need to step up and be in front of the camera and actually talk to people. You uh, um, you're right here I am. Um, but it's, to me, it's, you know, 30 years as a, as a public servant at, at the university, um, 
I felt that in 55 years, really here in the Madison area, I kind of felt it was the right time in my life to step up. I have I have three kids. Um, they're uh, I think six, 15, and 19. So, you know, I spend a lot of time, you know, kind of part time stay at home dad, and uh, you know they. They need me in different ways, but they don't need me around as much as they, they used to. So I, I now have the time in my life for the first time in, in years to, uh, to kind of give back. So um, let's see, what is, uh, well, first of all, I mean, before I keep babbling on, because I, I could be here all day, I thought I'd just start with, with maybe a, a question from, from people here, uh, you know, and also from, 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 from online, and, and then, I can, uh, then I can go into the to other 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 things I'm prepared to speak about. So not putting anybody on the spot, but any any, any immediate questions that anybody have? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just... We chatted a little bit about this before the meeting, but could you please address uh, the proposed changes to Madison Transit? Okay, great. Um, I was going to leave that one to the end, but uh, yeah, we could just, uh, yeah, boy, okay. Well, we have, yeah, when I started as, as Alder, I was, a, I mean, I was appointed, uh, born in, back in June, and I think the first thing that I had to vote, I, I, I also, I think I might have one of the records of being the shortest run-up time from being appointed from from being appointed or, or uh, to actually serving and being getting sworn in, so I was uh, it was like I think on Wednesday they interviewed me, um, and at the end of that interview, then they said, "Okay, unanimous, you know, decision, and you're you're now the new alter that will go and be sworn in on the following Tuesday." So I only had a couple couple of days to get ready, and the first thing on the agenda was. Uh, the bus redesign and i'm like so other people have spent years you know working on this getting ready and i you know my my wife takes the bus uh you know every, every day my kids take the bus you know i have to admit i i don't i don't ride the bus as much as i, I probably should um so i i wasn't as familiar with 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 uh, i wasn't really paying as much attention as i probably should have um so you know i relied very heavily on on what the staff recommendations were um, but the one thing that I saw, and I'll, I'll get to the, 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 your question, I'm not trying to uh, talk and avoid the, the question, which, uh, but um, one thing that I, I, I was puzzled by is, is some of the bus, and most of the bus routes look the same for District 11, so I thought, okay, this is, this is okay, uh, this is not going to have a major impact on, on this district. Other districts, pretty, pretty major changes in, in where the bus routes are going to go and the bus stops. Um, but one of the ones that kind of troubled me was the the bus that runs right right down the street to here, um, the uh, and uh, uh, two two camps. It was, and that uh, that was only running during peak times. And I was like, this is a bus that that many people take to get to the university, especially get to the hospital. And uh, I was like, why is this running over over only during peak time? This is this is something that if anything, this should be should be all you know all day. I, I said, you know. You know, university employees, especially uh, especially hospital employees, do not work nine to five, and you want to have employees get to the hospital. Be, you know, there's only two ways to get to the hospital, and I said I you know, prefer to have people get to the hospital uh, on their own two feet on the, uh, taking the bus and not have to uh, um, not have to uh, worry about driving, parking, and that's why people move. I think many people have moved into this neighborhood to be close to where they work. So. Um, so I made a lot of fuss about that, and uh, and that bus route was was uh, was uh, wisely changed to be all day service. Um, so that was my, then you know I voted in favor of, of of the bus redesign. I know it's for some, many individuals this is requiring uh, walking a little bit further, um, you know. But we were we were we were told that it's going to be a more reliable bus service. Um, so then along the way, you know the the. You know, I'm I'm hearing more about you know you know we have the bus rapid transits, the funding that's coming in. Uh, we're going to have them running every uh, every uh, 15 minutes. Um, we held we held uh, town hall gatherings. We brought the uh, you know uh, the mayor came to to uh, to the district to talk about uh, 
what's going on with the uh, the changes in the bus rapid transit. Um, and then one of the questions was, uh, you know, will historic districts be included? Because up until that point, you know, they, you know, all of the plans, what, what people were being told is they were historic districts would not be included. And uh, you know, when, when, the, when the mayor was asked the question, you know, she deferred that to, to, to staff who were, who were there. What was said is, you know, the, the buses, uh, that the historic districts would not be included. That's what everybody heard. You know, um, mayor uh, did not did not correct that, and uh, so we again, historic districts would not be not be included. Um, so I was kind of surprised in December on December fifth when uh, when Alder Furman uh, introduced adding historic districts at you know, uh, and uh, and then that would be eventually going on to the planning commission, and eventually going on to the to a vote in uh, January third. And I immediately say, this is not giving me or any other alder who have historic districts in our, in our area a chance to to engage with 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 the public and explain what's why the sudden change. Um, um, myself, Alder Vitivere, who's in District Five, uh, just just over in the Sunset uh, Village uh, area, um, managed to get it. You know, uh, it, the Common Council meeting to, to to discuss to vote on the bus rapid transit and the transit or overlay over rezoning um, was moved to the seventeenth. So we had time to then have the town halls to talk with with people, talk with with the uh, talk with the media because nobody was covering this. Um, and then if you watched or heard or picked up the paper, you see, you see there was a lot of discussion about um, you know the uh, you know the upzoning. And I was against uh, adding historic districts because I just did not see this as solving what what other politicians are saying as a housing crisis. And I kept saying that when, when you use the word crisis, that requires immediate response. You know, this is something we have to deal with, you know, handle right away. And then you you hear from the planning director and others that that the that creating the uh, the you know the overlay zoning uh, is going to create small incremental changes. You're not going to see a lot of changes coming along right away. So I'm like, why, why include historic districts right now? Why create unnecessary tension um, and and changing the message that we've been telling people all along? Suddenly we're switching that. Um, you know, uh, that was that that created a whole bunch of controversy about. Uh, you know, who owns single family homes that's be we have you know we're being excluding people which which is just not not true for this this neighborhood i don't think that that's um so uh one of the compromises uh one of the ways to kind of move things forward was proposed by uh, uh alder evers who is is uh uh and he he proposed because of the concerns that if we do change all the zoning up zoning that that there would be a lot of uh you know, a lot of realtors are interested in in these areas, um, and what he proposes to have uh, an owner occupancy requirement in uh, duplexes, so that it would give people the opportunity to to own own property, but then also make make uh, their uh, their houses their spaces available for for people to rent, but not having two renters in those spaces. And that seemed like a, a lot of us thought that that's a that's a very uh, reasonable way to move forward. And this is just just along the <clears throat> the new proposed uh, overlay zoning um, that was that was voted down. Um, so we now are are here in a situation where one quarter mile of all of the uh, bus routes, where buses run every fifteen minutes, all the zoning will, will be will be up zoning. So single family housing will be up zoned to. Uh, to duplexes, duplexes will be, you can now have three, so on and so forth. Um, what's What struck me is also is kind of, you know, odd is that we we did pass an ordinance to allow uh, accessory dwelling units. Um, and so with the accessory dwelling units, you can add, uh, you know, an extra living space, this is, you know, backyard above a garage, you know, and that has an owner occupancy requirement, um, you know, but we, you know, so I'm like, okay, that's this is a way to start to create a density, but it's very expensive to do that, and we're not seeing that much going on. So, so I've I've been very uh, very vocal um, 
it got the attention of of you know of, of news organizations. It got the you know speaking to to uh, neighborhood associations, speaking to the people in the public. Um, you know, it's it kind of word word got out. I'm 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 my what I want to see is kind of what we're seeing here in uh, in District 11. I think it's it's working. You know, we we do have large residential neighborhoods that that were uh, uh, you know established and have been designed, I believe, around uh, you know designed I, in many ways very well thought out sidewalks uh, centered around schools. Uh, you know. Uh, Walk, basically walkable neighborhoods. Um, we also had spaces, you know, that were, uh, you know, were zoned for uh, for for commercial use. And just just right, no, right, right next door, we have a prime example of where you had a space that was commercial, um, and that with the right scale, right design, you can take a, a a large empty parking lot, you know, build in additional housing, housing both apartments and condominiums and stores. And that just fits within within the neighborhood. Um, you now have the changes going on over in Madison Yards, where you have the uh, you know was once Westgate. Um, now it's being turned into to a lot of housing, a combination of housing, and that's just phase one. Phase two is is coming. You'll see even more housing there. Then we over have over by Hilldale. We're going to be seeing more housing going on up there, uh, and then we also have Madison Yards. So we're I think right now. In District 11, we're adding over 2,500 apartment units uh, that's going in. Uh, there's even we could be seeing another another uh, thousand or more in the next couple of years. And I think that's and that you know that's really where I see if we if we are in a crisis, that's the way that we find opportunities to treat people to 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 live in the neighborhood. And we can have both. We can have uh, the single family housing. We could have the duplexes. Um, but we can also have we can start building up instead of instead of only only pushing out, um, and I think that's that's where I kept arguing is where I want to spend my my time, you know, and throwing in historic districts at the last minute, and not telling people. I think all it is doing was upsetting uh, individuals, and it really felt more like this was being done for for campaign purposes, and not really uh, as a way to uh, to kind of uh, keep people informed and keep keep government kind of transparent. Does that, yeah. I, 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 what are considered to be historic districts? Yeah, we have a combination of both local and, and national historic districts. Uh, so uh, uh, these are not the, uh, and I, I should have this all memorized at the top of my head, but I, I, I don't. Um, Hill Farms is a national historic district. It was something, it, it's, a, it's an area that was, uh, designed uh, by the University of Wisconsin and working with with the uh, with the city of Madison uh, design it what, what they call a complete neighborhood you know where, where the schools are going to be where the where the parks are going to be uh, where the churches were going to be um, uh, where the where the uh, shopping apartments all that and so that's it kind of came at the tail end of, of a larger movement in our in our in our country um, so you know back uh, I think I'm not sure what, what 1880s, something like that or so. Um, and so it's a, kind of one of the last kind of communities, you know, uh, suburbs that was designed that way. Um, that's why that's why when they applied to get it on the National Register of Historic Places, that's that's kind of where, where, where it fit in that designation. It wasn't. Um, uh, there are other districts that are uh, historically significant. We have the uh, Mansion Hill District downtown, a lot of. Uh, we have uh, then over in the uh, uh, University Heights. So those are really for the kind of the, the architecture that, and, and, and then there's also one that's are, are, uh, historically significant. So those are the kind of examples. Um, local historic districts have a little more protection from the city. National ones are more um, kind of uh, an honorary. And it's, it's there are people who, who live in, in, in these districts to kind of, Keep within the historic character, uh, you know. Do receive, I guess, a funding from, uh, you know, for for making improvements. Um, so that's that's kind of a quick overview. Uh, yeah, on the. 
you've identified or you've been talking about two recent issues that have been high profile, the rap, rapid bus and, and zoning. Uh, given the, that news often focuses on what's happening presently, and given that budgets are being formulated, and given that we have an election coming up, what do you see as primary, should be primary focuses of city government coming up, either long-term or short-term, because these do affect voting and, and uh, uh, public perception? Yeah, no, thank you for that question. Um, yeah, I, I think some of these topics are kind of you know, kind of dominating the news, um, and we we have another one, another one coming right on the heels of uh, of the uh, bus rapid transit and the uh, overlay zoning is is going to be the now the change in family family definition. So that's that's going to be coming. Uh, it was something that was going to be delayed until until June after the election, um, but we have some alders who have been pushing hard to have that now come back to the common council for a vote uh, before April. So that. Once that comes, that's going to be the next topic that's going to dominate everybody's conversation. And I don't want to spend a lot of time now talking about that because I'm still trying to understand fully what this is going to, to how it's going to change um, our understanding of, of the definition of family in our in our zoning. But uh, so I'm always welcome to come back or bring somebody who's might be a little more knowledgeable in this area. So where I think we should be focusing on. Uh, you know, is one is is uh, one is going to be on on crime. I think we have uh, that is you know we are a growing city. I think crime is something that that is that that's you know that it, we're you know we're we're is always going to be present. It's just how we kind of respond to it. And I think that that's we're not paying enough attention right now. And I think that's an area that uh, that the we should be having more discussions about. I am I am all in favor of of some of the the changes that we're doing where we're funding for people to respond if there's mental health crisis and other you know uh, that is that I think is very appropriate sending sending police uh, you know is you have to send the most appropriate person for the situation um, but that doesn't mean that we have to then uh, reduce uh, uh, the number of police officers that we have. I think uh, as our population grows, we're going to have to just accept that we're going to have to also increase the number of, of officers. And I guess also where I'm, you know, uh, I want to, you know, we have a, a, you know, a police station just right next door. And um, one of my big concerns is it's not always the, you know, it's, you know, it's concerns about, you know, violent crimes, but we also, you know, when we're responding to, to, to bigger, you know, these issues around town, we also need to be having officers in place to handle uh, just, it feels like the, the the amount of, well, we have the amount of traffic as more people are coming through, and we have, uh, as we get more congestion downtown, you know, the easiest way to get from the east side to the west side is, is the Beltline, and, uh, you know, our district was designed, and we're, we're kind of a, 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 you know, a kind of a Cold War uh, design around the Cold War. When you have, you know, broad boulevards, you need to evacuate the city in case of, of a, a nuclear attack. You know, you have it's also, but these also create, you know, you know, very fast corridors where people can can drive. You know, you have um, you have other neighborhoods that were designed, you know, where they would put cul-de-sacs or curvy roads, so so you can't drive through residential neighborhoods. But you know, so we have we have uh, crisscrossing some pretty broad boulevards, you know, four lanes. Um, you know, we, we try to keep the speed limit, you know, 30 miles an hour, 25. These are also passing schools. So I'd like to see, I think one of the issues I'd like to see addressed more is having uh, having more attention towards uh, uh, the amount of, you know, speeding and keeping control of, of how fast people are driving. If we can't allocate more officers, then I, you know, I want to see more emphasis put on making the intersections safer. Um, one of the early things that I uh, started and I, I was, again, a couple of weeks in, I was suddenly presented with with uh, being told that we were going to reduce the number of, of crossing guards. And uh, especially the one that's just right, you know, right, right down the street there, I mean, when, you know, Midvale uh, and, and uh, Mid, uh, Midvale and, and Mineral Point. And I'm like, that is probably one of 
the most dangerous intersections to cross. Um, you see signs there that says, you know, you know, stop on red if if a crossing guard is present. You know, there hasn't been a crossing guard there for you know for you know for uh, I think almost a year now, but we still have the signs up. Um, so, you know, I I was told that we don't have students crossing. There have to be certain criteria to to warrant this. We have a hard time finding crossing guards, budgets, all kinds of excuses. Um, the best I could do, and I, I really uh, fought hard, is I was able to uh, add a new crossing guard at uh, on Sego, right near uh, Velma Hamilton uh, Middle School and um, and Van Heys. There's a new crossing guard there, and we found someone uh, to uh, who, who took the job and is you know is is doing very well. Um, and decision between we you know where where to put a crossing guard and I just didn't think it was right you know we you know right up where, where queen of peace is that's that's a safer place to cross you know as and uh, um so there is a crossing guard maintained there as well so there's there's many ways for, for people to get so I think that I think uh public safety uh I think we need to be a little, a little uh more attention on on crime and also I, I it's probably just because I'm a you know, it's uh, early influence. I'm the son of a landscape architect. Uh, so I kind of grew up in an environment where, uh, you know, natural areas, preservation, um, planting trees were, were, were high priority. And I just, I, I just sometimes feel like we are not given enough attention to uh, kind of the urban forest we have. Um, you know, we have, uh, if, you know, we need, so I'm, I've been very active. I think we need to put more attention on, uh, on making sure that we not only have kind of the tree canopy that we see in our neighborhood, but across, across the whole city. And if that's going to cost, you know, the, the say little, it's a little tougher to, to, to mow on the medians or if it's a little, uh, or it requires that, you know, we have to go in and trim for ever larger, you know, uh, garbage trucks or other, you know, that's, I think I'd rather put the money towards keeping the trees there than having to spend the money on having to, you know, with with the, having an ever, I guess, warmer uh, city as as the temperature keeps dry, rising, or uh, or dealing with flood uh, flood issues. I mean, trees are the best ways that we have uh, to to pull moisture out of the ground, and uh, you know we don't have to. We'll be spending you know millions and millions on, on culverts to divert water. But we we could also be spending just you know uh, money on planting trees that can also help the same process uh, and and then we, then we have benefits all year round. So those are those are my two things: crime and crime and the environment, I guess. So I just was going to follow up on the crossing guard question, and this may just be a comment, but um, certainly pre-pandemic, um, our parking lot doesn't hold quite enough cars for most Sunday mornings and I don't know, maybe we'll get back to that. Um, but we, so we use the neighborhood streets and I know there was interest in uh, maybe some traffic calming or traffic controls um, to get to the Sequoia library parking lot from across Tokay and then maybe even across Midvale over at Wakefield or a block down from that. So I, you may, you may hear that, but I, I don't know if that's something that you've um, thought about it's it's only Sunday morning, so it's not uh, necessarily something that people would use all the time, but um, something that we've thought about. Oh yeah, I thought, I thought about it quite a quite a bit. Um, and uh, you know, one of the things that that we've, you know, I, I when I started off, I was told as an alder, there's two things you should not talk about if you ever want to get uh, uh, reelected. And one of them was 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 taking power lines and and putting them underground. You know, don't bury you know. And uh, the other one was was sidewalks. Don't talk about sidewalks. And so I, not being a very good listener, I proceeded to talk about sidewalks. Uh, <laughs> and and I, uh, uh, you know, I was saying that that's back in back in the nineteen nineteen forty eight, I believe forty nine, when this when when Westmoreland, where we are, became uh, part of part of the city of Madison. Some of the thing, some of the the two things that that residents were saying they want the alder to do was to put in street lights and put in sidewalks. And uh, so back, you know, I, I think I was, I was running at the wrong time. If I was running back, you know, 80 years ago, I'd probably would have a much better, better, better time. But I started talking about sidewalks, that we need to have sidewalks 
um, if we want to uh, and complete the sidewalks. We have some very odd sections in our neighborhood where the sidewalk starts and then and then it stops and it picks up again. I'm like, you know, um, so uh, yeah. So I started pushing sidewalks um, because otherwise you you have to then walk into the street and that's that's not safe. Uh, I was I spent my early number of years pushing strollers around and it's you know I, my my kids we would know the, the to visit you know to go to places visit to visit friends go to the library we would you know there are we would have a certain routes and it would also oftentimes be be, be uh, uh, you know dictated as to where the sidewalks were um, but that's that's really not enough and I think what you're addressing is that you know we 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 don't have enough uh, law enforcement to enforce the speed limits we have we have signs um, so we need to do things you know to to make it safer for people to who are walking and biking to cross. Otherwise, if we can't make the street safer for people to to cross, then you know they're they're going to do what a lot of uh, people do, and it's it's safer to drive. Um, at least you have a fighting chance, you know, if if you're you know in your in your vehicle. And so, um, you know, and again, it's we have many kids who who are walking to to schools, and it's you know it's as a parent, it's it's you know it, it every time they leave. The house that morning it's 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 you know it's always a back of your head is this you know is this safe and so why why make it harder for parents to uh you know to have their kids walking to a school that may only be a few blocks away you know that's why you see so many you know minivans lined up dropping off kids i'm wondering you know how many how many times it's just you know they could just walk but it's it's just you know a little nervous crossing those streets and then if you don't have crossing guards, it just it just makes it even more of an issue. So, um, I've early on I, I was starting to have I started having uh, neighborhood gatherings where I brought the different neighborhood associations together, kind of asked them to help me identify, you know, what are the three in your districts in your in your uh, neighborhoods, what are the three biggest areas that you want to see traffic calming solutions to be put in? And so now I'm working with the. Uh, uh, with the city to find find funding, find the money to start to, to implement those. Uh, for Westmoreland, the areas that were identified were along Odana Road. That was a very it's an area, and then also right here on on on, on Toke as you cross to the to the uh, uh, cross to the uh, uh, library, and also a little bit further down. When you come over that that hill down here, it's you, you can go you know pretty fast. Um, so. And then also, the thing is too, we also have another ordinance where we have the dark skies initiative. We want to have have less light pollution. So you know, we so if we are decreasing the amount of light in the city, which I think is a good thing, we have to think about uh, no, uh, light pollution is 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 an issue. Then we need to be installing. If we're going to decrease the amount of and tell residents to decrease the amount of uh, lights they have in their homes, change the way our 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 uh, uh, street lights are, then I think. The least we can then do is put in more funding and resources to have flashing lights when you are crossing. Oncoming cars can see that. Um, so those are some of the things that I'm seeing. Also, we have very large boulevards. So, you know, we're you know when you cross, uh, you know, uh, Midvale Boulevard. At least there's a, a median in the middle, so you, you can if you're not walking, it's you know sometimes these uh, these crosswalks you got to be. That light turns uh, the walk sites there, and you got to start walking right away. Otherwise, you might not cross, and you know. So at least you can stop in the middle. But there, but we have like on Odana, there's no place to stop. So you you have to really be moving. So yeah, real fast. So we understand uh, the allocation by the state uh, for education and schools, as well as the local school board has its own purview. But as it relates to schools that are already at capacity in many locations, especially around this neighborhood population wise, and you spoke about the density before that we're going to see soon. What are you at the city council level able to do regarding planning or managing for that? So planning to expand our schools or planning to, to, to put to build more schools in, in dense? Right, just to manage the what seems to be an anticipated influx of greater population at schools that are just from a physical stand plan standpoint already at capacity yeah and i yeah i think thanks for that question because i have my youngest son goes to uh is in sixth grade goes to to belma hamilton uh middle school 
uh, class sizes are already too large. I mean, it's, you know, my, my, my wife teaches at the university and, 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 you know, handling, you know, 30 plus college students is, is the task, uh, but you only have them for a short period of time during the week. Uh, handling class sizes, you know, uh, 30, you know, uh, you know, sixth graders and, and younger, that's, that's a tough, that's a tough job. And so when I'm asking these questions, um, you know, we're, we're, again, people are saying we're in a housing crisis, we're so quick to build, but I don't think that it's being thought through. I don't think that, you know, that the, uh, the discussion about how, what impact are all the new housing now with all the changes in zoning, what's, how's that going to affect our, our schools? Um, so we, you know, so the answer is I honestly don't know. I think we need, but it's something that, that, you know, we, we change, we change one thing, it affects, has a, has a, has a ripple effect. And I think what I'm, what I'm troubled by is the fact that we are taking a good idea with bus rapid transit, you know, we're, we need to have less dependence on automobiles. And I, I get that, but then we're adding changes in zoning, which then changes, you know, we're, we're more, more density, but we're also not looking at, at, at other amenities, uh, in reason, you know, and looking at our schools, we're not looking at, at, at our, uh, creating incentives for, uh, more, sh more shops, more, more types of stores that you would, you would stop or you would get off the bus, uh, to go in, you know, buy something and then hop back on the bus. I mean, you know, so I, we, we, we are benefit. I, I kind of pivoted here. I, I got I, sorry about that. I, you know, we, we have, uh, you know, we have all, we have our district, we have, uh, I think four major grocery stores. We have another or another one coming. We have uh, Whole Foods is coming. So these are all stores where you drive. You know, you need you get, buy 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 in bulk. You know, um, but I'd like to see, you know, to if we have a you know a, a reliable, robust bus rapid transit, um, I can see many people instead of making, you know, big weekly shoppings with with their car. You know, making stopping at a, at a you know smaller store along the bus route, you know, something that's just part of their routine. You know, and just getting off the bus, shopping, grabbing what you need, you know, more fresh foods, and then uh, and then hopping back on the bus. You know, uh, that. So, but I don't hear any discussion about what types of stores will be along. It's all about it's all about high density people. And I think if if you build a reliable bus service, and you we find you know then you and you have amenities along the way um i think you'll get the density but i am but it feels like we're just kind of forcing uh the issue and not not getting people up to speed but i, I getting back to your question i i that is a topic of getting uh looking at our schools i'm, I'm very worried about uh you know the you know our our schools that we have here you know we'll be seeing you know more overcrowding um or I, I get concerned that we're going to see parents who won't be able to to uh, afford housing or not find housing that's large enough for a growing family and just look at the the surrounding community as a, as a place that they would move to. And I, I don't want to. I mean, I I, I think our Westmoreland. I'm seeing quite a bit, a bit uh, of the neighborhood. We're seeing more and more younger families moving here. Um, but I mean, the house that I moved into, you know. Uh, you know, 20 years ago is now doubled in price. I don't, I, I, you know, you know, I, I, working at the university, I don't know if I could afford to look, you know, this as this as a starter home. So, um, so I'm, I'm worried that that we are uh, uh, also pricing a lot of people out of out of out of the neighborhood. So, um, you just <laughs> tied into the question I was, or, I don't know. Uh, an observation that I have. I'm, I'm a regular user of the bus and I used to live closer to Kildale, but last year moved to the far west side. And going back to what you said about bus routes only running during quote unquote peak hours. Anyone that has a nine to five job in Madison, Wisconsin is not riding the bus mm -hmm. from my observation of when I'm riding the bus. Right. It's people that 
are either their students or their people with retail jobs that work odd hours. They're um, senior citizens or disabled people who maybe are not working, but are using it, like you said, to get to the grocery store or just move about. And so designing a rapid transit system around imaginary people who use it for nine to five purposes. Yeah. I, 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 I think there, and, and it, then it goes back to the, the pedestrian safety and everything else. So just to piggyback on that, I'm an able-bodied person and I have an impossible time crossing boulevard intersections, if you go by the pedestrian crossing light, yes. you pretty much better be able to run. Well, well let, me, let me tell you about some of the things that, um, I, I know we're kind of getting close to time, so I wanna talk about some of the positive things that I think I've managed to do, just because I, I was gonna lead with that and then I jumped into that. But, uh, but one of the positive things is, is by, uh, by talking about sidewalks, you know, and, and, just, uh, and just saying that we, again, we, I think I've said oftentimes that you know the the best planned bus route, the best bus stop, the best most reliable uh, bus service is does nobody any good if they can't make it to the bus stop. So, so we're you know I'm trying to tie in uh, buses with with sidewalks. Um, also, one of the disadvantages of adding sidewalks is that that the the owner of the property ends up paying all the price. So we we. You know, we kind of spread out the cost of of, of the roads, but you know, for, so cars we're we're subsidizing or we're helping. We all kind of chip in for the roads, but but sidewalks that that's on that's on the owner. So that's that's changing now. We, we uh, I've been supportive of of an ordinance to, as new sidewalks come in, it's it's going to this the city will be will be paying for it, or or we all will by spreading out our our taxes. And I think that is that is the right direction. To go in, so now it's you know uh, now I think residents who were who might want to put a sidewalk in there, you know, not just for themselves but for their neighbors, uh, now it's not a financial burden, um, and so that's that's a positive thing. So um, let, me, let me grab one question. Then I'll, then I'll tell you like two or three positive things I've done, and just so I end on a on a high note. So yeah. Well, this is just a real quick thing. I remember. I don't know who was here a while back, but someone, I don't know if this changed, the eight o'clock service people might know, was at 7.30, the lights here are flashing instead of being red. And they thought if you could start the regular cycle earlier for people that come to eight o'clock service would help a lot. So that seems like a, if that wasn't done, that would be a fairly simple oh. <laughs> fix for oh, I, I always like, a small problem. I always like simple fixes. So I, I can talk with, uh, yeah. But when we hear about the bus rapid transit, it, it's about uh, the deca, uh, uh, eliminating congestion on the streets and, and people who live within the city getting from one place to another. But a big reality here in Madison is that Madison is a magnet for jobs right. uh, held by those who live in surrounding areas. So, and one thing I have not heard about the rapid transit uh, bus it, it's, it, it goes between East Town and West Town, but is it going to be touted also as a place for park and ride? Because yeah. you, you go outside of Madison during a rush hour, whether it's they're incoming or outgoing, you see just lines and lines of cars, whether, whether you go east, west, north, or south. So is, is it going to be encouraged for people to, who live in Madison or outside of Madison to park that car and then take the bus? Yeah, and that's, that's I think, what we're hearing a lot from uh, concern neighbors already with the bus routes, you know, people will park as close as they can to where they we work. I mean, so we have, if you have, you know, all day parking, you know, uh, you know, they will, they will park, hop on the bus and, uh, in, in, uh, you know, and that's, again, that's not as, you know, parking, parking downtown, parking on campus is expensive. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, you're talking, uh, so if you can, if you can, so people are, I really don't understand how we're, you know, we're, we're solving climate change if somebody is driving 
you know, several miles, they get within one, you know, one or two miles, maybe three miles of their place of employment, then hop on the bus. That's, that's not, doesn't strike me as, as solving the issue. So, uh, yeah, we need to, we need to be looking at ways to extend our bus service well beyond Madison. Plus we also are working off of these, these, and again, getting to your point, um, with, we're still kind of thinking and designing our city in a, in, you know, in with, with the assumption that, you know, people are working nine to five, that there, there wasn't a pandemic and there aren't a significant number of people who are, are working remote, you know, that they are not, um, and we have large populations of people who, whose jobs now have flexibility, either work fully remote or they work several days, days a week, but we, but those, that's, that's a more of a recent change now. Um, but as far as the, the park and ride, yeah, that's, I think that's something that, you know, I've maybe not been paying enough attention because I don't see any park and rides in district 11, but farther out to the, to the West side, uh, and the far on the East side, we should have designated spots. And I think at the same time, we should also be looking at, at, uh, parking here in our areas. And this is going to be a difficult for many residents is if we start having more, you know, in our area, more two hour parking. It's going to inconvenience neighbors here, but we may have to because otherwise, uh, it's it, we're going to you know as the services start to pick up, people will be parking here all day just so they can hop on the bus to go down downtown. But the last thing I want to say too is is we're also making the assumption that downtown is a destination, um, and uh, you know I think that's still kind of a, a I think I can see downtown as a destination for for many uh, many places. Uh, but we do, we do not have, I mean, in, in my lifetime, I've seen downtown become, it was not a place where you wanted to live. Um, it is now an attractive place for, for people. Um, I can see downtown being more, less about where the jobs are, more where the people are. And uh, I can see areas that we have here, like here on the west side, like we have the whole Odana area. We're, we're about to engage on, on looking at a, at a kind of a, a rethinking the Odana area, rethinking the whole West area. And so we have large, you know, we, again, we have most of the West side was designed around uh, the automobile. We have shops with big, big parking, uh, parking. So, uh, you know, if we can start to look at that, those spaces as, as areas where we can do kind of build up from the parking lots, you know, so you have, you have higher, like we don't have the height restrictions that you do in other parts of the city. So we could be, instead of, trying to change a couple of, of single family homes or duplexes to add housing. Uh, we could be looking at building up, you know, 12 story uh, uh, apartments, maybe a combination of, of condominiums too. So people could have home ownership um, and have shops on the ground floor. Uh, you know, you know, if there's parking, parking can be in ramps. I think what they did in Hilldale was, you know, was, was worked out very well. I mean, if you have, you have, you know, you have uh, housing on the street, you have parking behind, and you have the, then you have a shopping mall. And I don't see why we can't be doing more of that. Um, so that means to get so to get to your answer, I think you know, if we did have areas like that, if we looked at more, uh, if people are going to come from the surrounding uh, communities, you know, look at areas where we have large parking lots where there are stores, so you could park your car. I'm just throwing this out as you know, park your car out at West at, at West Town. Uh, Take the bus downtown, come back, do your shopping, and then drive. You know, uh, you know, five miles to where you live. You know, that then it's that that again might be a win-win for for people. Uh, I I agree with that, but uh, how does the management of uh, West Town and East uh, Town feel about that right now? Because I don't see any designation of park and ride yeah, parking lot. Yeah, it's not it's not my district. I haven't had a chance to talk with them, but I, I am talking with folks in 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 this district, and they're seeing uh, they're seeing you know. They're seeing, you know, that there that the bus rapid transit is, you know, is a way for them to create the high density relook because then these people are having to pay, you know, those those parking lots sit empty most of the time. So uh, rethinking about, I mean, they want, and if you design a, a business where you have to rely on people, kind of, you know, driving there, not just the people driving there, but also your employees, that all affects uh, prices. And again, I'm I'm an art major in college, I'm not an economist, but I think if if uh, if we had uh, less businesses that were less dependent on everybody having to drive and get a parking spot just to buy a few things, 
uh, and also having to have parking spots for employees. So you have employees that live near where they're working. Um, I think so oftentimes the people who, who are paid the least have to live the furthest away from their jobs. And, for, you know, and I think that's, so, so a lot of people who are driving in are the ones you know, who uh, because they aren't able to find housing here. Um, before we go, I want to just add two things that I've done, done positive, I think. Uh, okay, okay. Um, one, one is, uh, I said before that, uh, well, first of all, in, 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 this, in this neighborhood, I, I managed to, I kind of felt like I was neglecting West, Westmoreland a little bit. I was, you know, I, I, have, I have three, three kids. They're three big neighborhoods. I was kind of sometimes thinking of the, 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 the neighborhoods as, you know, I, I, I can't keep everybody happy at any given time. I always, you know, uh, I can keep two neighborhoods happy, maybe then I'm, I'm doing okay. So, um, but I also didn't want to get the percept, you know, perception that I was, you know, because I live in, in Westmoreland, I would be, you know, spending all my time helping out the area I live in. And then after seven months, I'd go back and no longer be an alder. So, so I made a concerted effort to, to look at the other neighborhoods that I, uh, and, uh, so what I was able to, to do, uh, and we had that big windstorm and it, it damaged a lot of trees. Um, so one of the, the, one of the first things that when I started, I got, I got this, uh, I get this call from residents, uh, saying, will you come over and look at, 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 uh, our greenway that's in our, in our, in our backyards, you know, that, that, uh, there are big trucks in here hauling out trees, you know, just, you know, they're causing a lot of damage. And so, so I'm new, I like, sure, I'll come by and take a look at it. And I show up and, and like, I'd say there's gotta be at least there's gotta be at least 30 people there and they were pretty angry. And I'm like, and uh, folks were saying, okay, he's, he's just the new alder. Don't get mad at him. He's not responsible for this. And uh, so I, I listened to the, to the, to people ask, you know, and they were very upset about, um, you know, they, they saw the, they saw the, the Robin Greenway as, as a park. Um, the city sees it as, as a greenway to handle flood, uh, mitigation, you know, at the, you know, and so as, as just open culvert in a sense. Um, so when, when, when there's trees going down their power lines, you know, they just sent, it's a, again, we're in it, we're in a crisis because the powers are out, is, is, there's no power. So big trucks go in, haul out the trees so they can get access to the power lines and they just destroyed what people saw as a park. And so, uh, so, uh, what I was able to do is, was by listening to the neighbors, uh, you know, learning what what the city can do. Um, I managed to get a budget allocation. This 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 the good stuff never really gets in the paper. Um, uh, got a budget allocation uh, to restore the greenway, and we're 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 working with the uh, landscape architect, working with the city. We're going to be putting in a nice uh, a kind of is a, we're we're calling it a service path, but it's actually going to be a nice winding meandering path through the through the greenway. That uh, people people can now walk walk through. Um, we're going to be working with re, uh, planting trees. Uh, some of the trees that were destroyed, we're planting new trees, and we're working with the uh, 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 the middle school to have this kind of be a kind of a conservation lesson. Learn about uh, learn about uh, the environment, and so they'll be involved with helping with planting of, of the undergrowth that was all destroyed. So so uh, that's that's. Uh, and, I, and from that engagement, I'd say there's probably maybe a hundred people that I'm interacting with, and they're interacting with the city. So this example of, of the city working with with residents and listening, uh, and making good decisions. Um, I also managed. I mean, I, things I can't take full credit for, but uh, a big fan of the uh, the uh, capital uh, capital band concerts at Renabon Park, and so uh, Jim Lattimore. Uh, was like we have a lot of uh, older folks, including my parents. I would bring my parents to there, and and uh, um, you know, and the, the the restrooms weren't really accessible. So I said, I'll I'll see what I can do, and um, and I called up the city and said, Hey, could you could you you know make the bathrooms a little more uh, accessible for people in wheelchairs? And uh, the city's like, Oh yeah, we already have that on the plans. That's going to be starting in in summer 2023. And so I I wrote back. Uh, to the uh, band conductor and he's like oh that's great so he's giving me all the credit um but one of the first things that i was told that you know um one thing that that the uh 
uh, current mayor uh, said to me is, you know, is you're going to get blamed for everything you didn't do. So you might as well take credit for some of the things, uh, you know, when a good thing comes along, just, just take the credit, you know? So, uh, but it, uh, I also managed to the, uh, in, uh, I put, I fixed the, the, I was meeting with the Boy Scouts. Uh, we, there was a 4th July ceremony and they, they wanted to raise the flag and we have a, they were standing right by the flagpole, but I was like, why aren't, why aren't you raising the flag on the flagpole? And I said, oh, it's been broken for years. So, so I, I call up and I said, I'd like to have the city as I'd like to have the uh, flagpole fixed. And so they came out and they said, what, what, you know, what, uh, what size flag do you want to hang there? And so I said, and so, so now, so they talked with them and now, uh, now the flagpole works. So hopefully next time we want to raise a flag and have the Boy Scouts there, it will be working. So it's a little tiny thing, but those kind of things just were neglected for years. Um, the last, I guess, another positive thing too, is, is the, uh, uh, what I call the Piper Park uh, over in Midville Heights. Uh, I guess it's Oak Park Heights Park or something, which I, um, it's a park that my, my kids would always go to. And uh, that's going to be, we'll be seeing a new, a new playground there. We got, we have uh, funding. Again, I can't take credit for this. It's like we, every 10 years or so, we, we go through and we, 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 uh, restore the uh, add new playground equipment but um but i was able to participate with 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 residents to uh design the uh or pick out the playground equipment the one thing i i stepped in early on i said is you can you can make changes to the to that park but do not touch the uh the baseball diamond the t-ball diamond because if if mike pressman finds out that i did anything to get rid of uh or that i would be run out of this this district i mean there is so uh so i've been assured that that not only that uh that uh, baseball diamond for the uh for, for the midville heights baseball uh league uh but also um all the other ones in the district will will, will remain intact and in fact anything we're going to be trying to use this effort to kind of uh you know plant a little more grass make it a little a little bit nicer for for kids um so uh so but but i see that as, as that's kind of what an alder is supposed to do. we have to worry about the the big city problems but you know, neglecting like the little thing, like, you know, is, I think, you know, I'm not, I think sometimes we get so, uh, so caught up in, in the, the, the large issues uh, that sometimes, sometimes that, you know, I think, uh, you know, people take their eye off, off of what the primary job of an alder is. I mean, we have 20 alders, you know, who, who are each from different parts of the, of the district, of the, of the city. And, you know, they're elected from these areas because they know the neighborhood, they know the people. Um, and I think that, you know, my main job is just to listen to people, find out what, 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 where we need attention and advocate for them because this, the, you know, city staff are not going to be, you know, you know, driving around, walking around, knowing all the, the all what might be the small things. Um, but the small things sometimes are very big to people. I mean, fixing a pothole, uh, along uh, uh, Seago is a very big deal for some people. And so um, we have over on, on Parman, uh, over on Odana is, is, a, is a, a little cul-de-sac area that, that's constantly neglected. It's not, it's never, uh, snow plows don't go through there. The street has probably not been, been resurfaced. Actually, they, they neglected resurfacing it. It just drove right by it. So, uh, so I've met with residents and said, okay, we're going to get the street resurfaced because it's it's it runs right off the bike path and kids refer to it as as the bumpy road um so i say this to the to the the head of the streets i'm like you know you you got to fix the bumpy road so that kids don't stop wiping out on their bikes because the next time i hear from a parent that a, a kid wiped out because the city neglected to fix to fix that um there's going to be major problems so uh, so those are the little things that i'm doing I think I have a mate, you know, um, but uh, uh, I'm, yeah, I, it looks like I'll probably be here another two years. So let's, I'm glad I can continue to have this kind of engagement. And so uh, feel free to invite me back uh, um, at a future time and let me know what, uh, what other little things I can fix around the neighborhoods. So, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Yeah, thank you. Next week is, um, 
Reconciling in Christ Sunday and our um, pride team is going to come and talk a little bit about that and share some of the work that they've been doing the last couple of years. So we'll see. You we'll see you there. Yeah, if, if anybody, I, I do have cards. If anybody wants to reach out to me, I'm, I'm, it's, uh, I print out a few of these. If I, if I give them all away, I get a free 